In this video, we're going to be going over the top five problems on this second generation S10 pickup. Now there's nothing wrong with this truck. There's nothing wrong with owning one or buying one. I actually used to own a truck just like this myself and I loved it, but every truck or vehicle has their problems and we're just gonna go over the top five for this one. Number one, the heater core. So two of the symptoms for a faulty heater core are one, you don't have any heat. You go to drive around, the engine's warmed up, you turn the heater on and there's nothing coming out. It's just cold air. What most likely happened is the heater core is plugged up. Now the coolant, maybe you didn't flush the coolant enough or maybe it just happened to have some extra sediment in there and caused the heater core to plug up. In that instance, you have two options. You can either try to flush the heater core out and maybe get a couple more miles out of it or you replace the heater core. To replace the heater core, you're gonna have to pull this whole dash out. You're gonna pull the steering column out and the heater box out to replace it. When you pull the heater box out, then you can access the heater core, put the new one in, put it all back together. It's a big job, but it's not that hard. The other symptom you may notice is the windshield fogging up while you're driving, and you may sell, smell something sweet. Um, what's going on there is the heater core is actually leaking. You may even notice it on the passenger side on the floor, some coolant. Um, in that case, there's nothing else you can do. All you have to do is replace it. Number two, the intake gaskets. Now, this is a V6 engine, and you have a head on each side, and in the middle is the intake gaskets, and coolant actually flows through the intake gaskets. So, you could have a coolant leak somewhere behind the water pump, and you may think it's a water pump, but chances are, it's just the intake gaskets. Now, to do the intake gasket, you have to take all this stuff off from up top. You have to take the distributor out, and access them. You don't have to take the upper intake off. There's a separate gasket there. You can leave that all attached. You do have to take the fuel lines out. And you don't have to take the valve covers off to do this intake gasket, which makes it a little bit easier. You're gonna pull the AC compressor out of the way, but you, do not to, you don't need to um, evacuate the AC refrigerant. You can just take these four bolts out for the compressor and then with these hoses, just move it aside. So that makes it a little easier. It's kind of a big job, but not that bad. Some of the symptoms you may find your coolant level is low or you may see coolant dripping on the ground. But if the coolant level is low and you don't see anything, it could still be the intakes. Because of the way the gaskets are, it's right next to where the oil is on the intake. So it could be actually dripping coolant into the block itself. So if you see coolant in your engine oil, if you check your oil and it's really high and it looks milky, chances are you got coolant in it. And you definitely want to replace the intakes at that time because eventually it's going to be bad, really bad for your motor. You may, no may also notice in the coolant reservoir, there could be oil in there. Some cross contamination. So make sure you replace those intake gaskets, it's pretty important. Number three, the distributor. Now it's located right back here. Here's the distributor cap. Underneath there is the rotor. Now you want to make sure you routinely change the cap in the rotor. Um, check your owner's manual for how often you should do that. Um, normally around 60,000 to 100,000. Not only the distributor cap and rotor, but also the distributor, the internals sometimes wear and could cause some problems. Now what you might find is you're not able to start the engine. Um, it'll turn over, it just won't catch. And also misfire, you may end up with some P0300 codes and that could have been the cause. But something you can check on this is if you take the cap off, there's two screws, one on this side, one on the other side and take a look at the terminals on the uh, distributor cap and then also look at the rotor itself and see if there's any corrosion or if there's any carbon tracks or anything, then those would definitely need to be replaced. One thing you can do is the caps themselves are numbered. So like this is terminal one, or this is cylinder one, so just mark that with a one. This one's five. Take a felt tip marker and three. That way when you go to put it back together, you know where they go. 
Number four, front wheel bearings. You may notice while you're going down the road at certain speeds, normally over 30 miles an hour, you will hear a growling in the front wheels. And it may not just be the tires chopped, but it may be the actual wheel bearings. And this one, you don't really hear it too much, but you can jack the front of the vehicle up and try to spin the wheel and see if you can hear it. And a lot of times, if you grab the wheel at the top and the bottom, see if there's any play there. If there's any play, you wanna check it out. It could be the wheel bearing itself. Number five, the fuel pump. Now, the fuel pump's located inside the gas tank. And to replace it, you're gonna either have to pull the gas tank down, or if you feel like it, if you have a lot of friends, you can take the bed off the vehicle and uh, move it to the side, and then you can access the pump. Depending on your vehicle's age and the rust, uh, it might be either easier to do it one way or the other. So one of the symptoms that you get from a bad fuel pump is the engine won't start. It'll just crank and crank and crank. It won't start. The other symptom is that it has an extended crank. So you go to start the vehicle and it just cranks and cranks and cranks and eventually it kicks on. What you can do in that instance is turn the key on, don't try to start it, then turn the key off and then turn the key on again and try to start it and it should start right up. What there is is there's actually a valve inside the fuel pump itself that when that valve goes bad, all the gas goes back into the tank and then there's no fuel in the lines or no pressure and then when you go to crank it, it's not readily available so it needs to prime the system first every time you go to start the vehicle after it's sat for a couple hours. Some of the things you can do to prolong the life of your fuel pump is keeping more than a quarter of a tank of gas in the fuel tank. That's going to keep the fuel pump cool and also replacing your fuel filter. It's located right here. You want to replace that about every 30,000 miles or less. Keep the good flow of fuel. Don't put too much strain on the fuel pump. Now I have a bonus one for you that could save you a lot of money. On the actual transfer case, there's a vacuum switch at the top. Now what happens when you engage the four-wheel drive, you push the button, it sends a signal to the encoder motor, which electronically is going to shift the transfer case into four-wheel drive. And then that pushes on this little switch right here that is vacuum actuated. That is going to send vacuum to an actuator on the front differential. That's connected to this um, cable right here that's going to engage the front differential. Sometimes this vacuum switch gets stuck in the open position where the vacuum is going to be continually feeding the front differential. So in that case, when you shift back into two-wheel drive, the front differential is still engaged, and that's going to cause excessive fuel mileage and wearing of front-end components, and you don't want to do that. So to take this out, it's pretty easy. Just use a 7 8 wrench. You just pull the vacuum lines off. Now this little ball, if you see that ball flush with the bottom of the sensor, then that ball is stuck. Um, this should normally be like this, and the transfer case just pushes that in. Now, that's one bad um, symptom of this being bad, but the worst symptom is actually this leaking transfer case fluid. Um, if the seals inside there go bad, uh, it can cause a lot more issues. So that vacuum switch when the transfer case fluid goes through the switch, it's gonna go up this line, this vacuum line, where it gets the vacuum from the engine. Um, now, that doesn't seem too bad that, okay, you know, you're going to lose some fluid into the engine. But that's not the bad part. Uh, the bad part is the fact that this line is also connected to your HVAC system. The HVAC system in this vehicle are vacuum actuated, and when those get fluid on them, they're going to cause the rubber part of the actuator to deteriorate and go bad. And then your HVAC doors aren't going to open close, do their job. It's really expensive to fix. So behind the glove box, if you flip the glove box down, there's this junction right here. This goes to your HVAC system. If you just get a little screwdriver in here, you just pull that out. You're gonna actually see if there's any um, fluid in there, if you see any oil type fluid. Um, there shouldn't be any oil in there at all. Now, if that happens, you wanna replace that switch, but you also have to clean out all these lines and that can be somewhat difficult. 
And these are some of the actuators. Here's the fresh door actuator or recirculation door actuator. And then this one right here, this is another actuator um, that goes to the vehicle. And there's a couple others, um, but put that back in. So the fluid can destroy all those actuators and it can destroy the control unit if it gets into the control unit. Um, then you're gonna replace that. And overall, this job gets really expensive. So it's a good idea to just replace that switch regularly. I would recommend doing it every couple of years or three or four years, you know, depending on the mileage you drive. So those are our top problems that we have found with this vehicle. If you needed any of those parts, make sure you check out 1AAuto.com. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring that bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our videos.